if you're going to model steam era railways, at some point you're going to need to model some rope. Here's a little selection of the uh, cranes from my layout, and as you can see, they've all got uh, dangly hooks, and so we've had to model some rope to attach those hooks to. But what's the best way of doing that? The obvious stuff to use is um, thread, or you know, all sorts of fine thread. And I've got a little bit of a selection here of thicker threads, um, cotton thread um, from your sewing kit, and even um, button thread, which is just a bit thicker and stiffer. The problem with all these things is that uh, although they look great when they're tight, when you push them, they have a tendency to bend in the wrong way. So a real rope, when, when it's uh, pushed or slack, doesn't bend upwards. But real thread that we're using here, well, it's too stiff. Uh, it doesn't sag under the weight of the um, under the weight of the uh, thread itself. Now this is uh, th this this is something that you can get around, and there are a few tricks. But it does mean that it's not the obvious best solution. One trick with um, thread, if you really want to use it, is to pull it tight, and then stiffen the thread up with a little bit of um, super glue. I've put it on a bit of plastic here. Just run the super glue backwards and forwards along the thread and really soak it in. Uh, PVA glue will actually work quite well as well, but it's a bit slower. And uh, so you need to keep the tension in the, uh, in the thread for a lot longer. But um, rubbing along, just using a small screwdriver, and you can see that uh, the thread itself is um, starting to stiffen up. The other advantage of doing this is it stops the thread getting any um, furrier, which is another problem with this stuff, that it looks overscale furry. Now, if you look closely, you can see that on this crane, which is a uh, Langley Models kit, I've used thread, and uh, yes, you can see it's gone a bit furry, but the super glue has made it quite strong, so it's not gonna bow anywhere. And uh, you can definitely see that uh, yeah, that's, quite a, that's quite a good stiff bit of thread there. That's not going to hang in a funny way. Doing the hook was a whole, whole game because you basically have to sort of hang on to the hook, put a bit of weight on it, then put the bits of thread on, and then run the super glue up and down. Does it work? Yes. Was it a pain? Yes, it really was. Uh, yeah, okay, this is a complicated crane to, uh, to, to uh, um, thread up, but... Uh, yeah, this was, this, was, this was a fiddly old job and took actually quite a long time. But I'm really pleased with the result because this is the sort of steam era crane that you would have found trundling around BR yards in the days before you uh, had hydraulics. Uh, everything had to be done with, um, with, with uh, ropes and pulleys in, in that era. Looks good, but not the, easiest thing in the, not the easiest thing in the world to use. In the latest issue of uh, BRM, I have built this little TT120 crane from an Osborne's model kit. And here, I haven't used thread at all. I've used something entirely different. What I've used is this stuff, soft iron wire. Uh, it's sold for florists, but you can usually get it at old fashioned hardware stores and uh, often from the trade at model railway shows. Great stuff, thin, um, black, which is a really nice color, to, really nice color for this stuff. And again, saves you a lot of work painting things. Pull it out of the back of the card, and there we have it. Now, the downside is that it is coily, and it's all springy, and it's all in the wrong way. That's no good. That's no good for modelling um, things. So what I need to do is I need to straighten it out. This is quite a useful technique because it works on all sorts of bits of wire. Plonk one end of the wire in the vise. I'm using a bench vise here because it sits in front of the camera, but you could use any, you can actually use any vise. Right, pull a bit out. Uh, there you are, look, it's all, it's all a bit coily and horrible, but one end in the pliers, give it a really good pull gently, and eventually it will break like that. Um, you don't need to break it like that, but look, absolutely dead straight. And this stuff's not going to go furry, and it's not going to go um, bendy either. It will bend the way you want it. So for the um, crane, what I've done is I've tucked it into the, um, you can see now, I've tucked it into the spool at the back, drilled a little hole, bent the end of the uh, wire over, tucked it in, super glued it in place, run it up the jib. 
um, and it's nice and straight. Super glued it round the top of the top pulley there. Super glued it round the top pulley there, and down to uh, the hook to the hook at the other end. And it's not going to move anywhere. You can then pose the hook. Um, it is really important with this, and it's quite handy with the with the iron wire. Make sure that um, that rope is vertical because if it's not, it's going to look really really weird on the layout because gravity will have all changed for you. But it's a very effective way of um, doing doing rope. I did the same on uh, on this crane here. You can see, look, the uh, hook waves around a little bit. I do need to, it's come out of storage, so I do need to rebend the uh, wires. But once it's bent, it stays bent, and uh, quite it is quite easy to use. Much easier than than actually real thread. The same trick will work with fine copper wire, which you might be able to get out of electrical flexes, uh, or really pull hard and you can get fine brass wire to do that but you can buy brass wire that's straight anyway and probably the easier solution to save yourself doing this this technique by the way of putting um putting bits of wire into the uh, vice and giving them a pull it's actually called drawing it's uh, a technique that uh, metal workers use because as well as straightening the wire it will also make it very very slightly thinner so you can have drawing plates that you pull the uh, wire through and it'll make it a set thinness and a technique, really simple, but do try a couple of times before you work on your model. Another option for um, rope and slightly thicker rope is to use some very, very fine elastic. This stuff is sold by um, people who, for people who do bead jewelry. And as you can see, it's very, very slightly uh, springy, which is brilliant if you want to um, have a telegraph wire or something that's a little bit vulnerable on the layout. This double O gauge Clyde puffer or double O scale Clyde puffer allows it is, is radio controlled. So I actually need to be able to get into the hatch. And doing this way means the, uh, that I can pull this around and the elastic will um, take up the strain. No problem at all. And then it will pull itself back to um, back to looking absolutely straight. This model is about 20 years old and uh, it's still on its original elastic. The tricky bit is that when you actually come to tie any of this stuff, it won't stay tied. There's no, the, because the elastic is very smooth, there's no friction to help knots work. So what you have to do is pull it really tight, do your knot up, hang on to a bit of that, bung some super glue on there, and that will set the knot so that uh, it stays there. And if you pull it tight when you're, in, when you're installing it, it will stay that tight, um, basically for the length of the, uh, length of the time the model exists. Now, um, there's, there's various methods of this stuff. You can, as I say, you can buy it from craft shops uh, for feeders. Uh, there's also an American product called Easy Line, and Backman's um, pre-wired telegraph poles come with a similar sort of elastic. So it will take knocks. So if you've got ropes or something on near the, near the front of the layout, you can use this stuff because, look, it springs back into position perfectly. So there you are. Three methods for rigging the uh, cranes and derricks and anywhere else that uh, you need rope on a steam era model. I hope this helps. Happy modelling.